Hi guys and welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome to the eighth in my series of documenting my ownership of my 1997 911 Type 993S. And today we're going to talk about the engine. So this is the engine, obviously it's rear bias, so it's actually placed behind the axle, in front of the actual axle, then it's called rear mid-engined, and when it's behind the front of the axle, it's called front mid-engined. So this is a rear engine bias. The reason why Ferdinand Porsche decided on a rear engine bias and, a, and to have the, the engine actually placed behind the axle was purely from the point of view of having more room inside the vehicle, and this goes back predating to the days of the early Beatles. They wanted more room in the cabin of the car. If they had the engine further forward, then at those times, it wasn't possible to have so much room in the car. And then the rear bias of the engine stayed because then it developed the, the 911 shape downstream from the Beetle, which then obviously the company moved across from Volkswagen to Porsche. And the style of the 911 shape was cast in stone and therefore they moved forward with the 911 design, engineering out any weaknesses of the rear engine bias as they went forward. Now this engine is called the M64 model engine and this is married to what's called the 950 gearbox. Now the M64 engine for the 993 is the improved version of that model type from the 964. The main differences between the 964 engine and the 993 engine are that the same seven bearing, main bearing crankshaft was implemented, but it was improved for torsional stiffness, which meant they could remove the torsional vibration sensor system from the actual engine, so that was designed out. Also, the valves are slightly larger. The con rods are lighter, which means that then you can have lighter pistons at the end of the con rods, and therefore performance was improved. In addition, downstream, as I talked about before, later models incorporated Variaram, and this improved the airflow into the actual induction system of the engine which increased performance. For more information about Veoram please refer back to previous versions and iterations of this series where I discuss the Veoram in detail. Now one of the other modifications that was made was that the 950 type gearbox was given an extra cog so it was moved up to six speed. The other ratios were normalized so that that six gear was incorporated across the board across the six gears so it wasn't just one additional long gear. With improvements in performance comes the possibility of additional heat. Now this is an air-cooled engine so to aid in the cooling of the engine they increased the cooling by performing such techniques as squirting oil underneath the piston skirt so in effect as the pistons are, are generating a lot of heat in the, in the cylinder ball to be able to help cool them down they're injecting oil directly under the piston skirts as the crankshaft is turning this assists in the cooling of the system as, as I've detailed before in my other videos linked below the engine is cooled by air but also by oil it's called an air cooled engine but a lot of the heat is actually dissipated away in the oil so obviously you have to have you have to have a very high quality oil you have to be very careful in monitoring the oil temperature you have to make sure that the oil is renewed on a regular basis because it's even more important on an air cooled engine now just to touch a little bit on here how the engine is cooled if you look here you actually have a fan that's driven off the main pulley off the crankshaft so, it's, so it obviously drives at crankshaft speeds and you have a cowling that exists over the whole engine and this fan pushes air across the cowling um, which can self-contains the air across the engine and the engine has cooling fins therefore enabling the, the air to cool the actual engine. Now the increase in performance and downstream the increase in heat as I mentioned earlier oil is additional cooler oil is the main cooler of the engine but also the rear engine cover, this section here, has a, a wing that actually comes up. Now initially the wing was designed to raise at the speed of 70 miles per hour, but then they realized that 
denoting that the car was going 70 miles an hour, which is shown by the wing rise, and obviously was alerting the police to the fact that possibly the car was speeding. So they decided to change that. So it now raises at a speed below 70 miles an hour. I'm not absolutely sure what speed it is, um, but it rises, I think it's about 40, 45. But the wing rises, um, and this has two effects. It adds a little bit of downforce, but very slight downforce, to be honest. Um, but the main feature of this rear wing, and of course this grill section, is that with this raised, then you're, the actual air is forced into the actual grills and down into the engine compartment, so it substantially increases cooling. So with the engine speed rising and perceivably heat rising, then the wing comes up, adding to cooling of the engine. Now the automatic gearbox was also an option on the 993, and that was named Tiptronic gearbox. The Tiptronic gearbox came over from the 964 in the same design, and the Tiptronic gearbox was only available on the two-wheel drive cars. It wasn't available on the all-wheel drive systems, and I believe that's because there wasn't space to put the additional engineering into the, into the actual compartment with an all-wheel drive system. With all the engineering that was required for the all-wheel drive system, they couldn't fit in the Tiptronic box, or the Tiptronic additional engineering. The Tiptronic system was upgraded to what's called Tiptronic S. Now obviously I can't show the Tiptronic box or the Tiptronic S here because mine's a manual box which is the more preferred option and more valuable option. But the Tiptronic S side actually incorporated the thumb buttons on the steering wheel so you moved up and down the gears by pressing buttons on the steering wheel. You also had the gear lever that you could move up and down to, to change the gears as well. But it was, the, it was fashionable because of F1 etc to have the touch buttons, the Tiptronic buttons on the steering wheel. Now it was it wasn't a sequential gearbox, it wasn't double clutched and it wasn't sequential as the downstream variants were. Um, so it was in effect an old style manual box with an actuator on there that created the Tiptronic automatic system. Now the Tiptronic system was good in its day but of course it's very aged now. Generally people stay away from the Tiptronic boxes because they're quite slow to action and they increase weight and it reduces performance um, and also they reduce the value of the car. 993s with Tiptronic boxes aren't as valuable. Now Porsche designed the Tiptronic system um, using the Tiptronic paddle switches. After Porsche had incorporated this into their cars, a lot of manufacturers then downstream incorporated the Tiptronic system. So Porsche were the innovators. Now with regards to different versions of engines that were incorporated into the different models of the 993 and the different horsepower that they were delivered with, I'll have to refer to my crib sheet unfortunately because I do not want to get this wrong. So the pre varia RAM models were 272 brake horsepower. The post varia RAM models were 285 brake horsepower and then this is the 285 brake horsepower model obviously this is a Varia Ram model. In 1995 came the turbo model and this was 408 brake horsepower. In 1997 and onwards to 1998 the Turbo S was released and the Turbo S created 450 brake horsepower. So Varia Ram was incorporated into the RS model and then late, later on downstream Varia Ram was incorporated into the other 993 models. The 993 RS model was, was released in 1995 and that was 300 brake horsepower. Obviously with that being released in 1995 they could have taken that power over to the other models of the 993 but for whatever reason they decided not to. They decided to leave that power only in the RS model. And in 1995 up to 1996 the GT2 model was incorporated and was released and that had 430 brake horsepower with an advanced version of the GT2 model called the GT2 Evo released in 1998 which had 600 brake horsepower. The GT2 Evo version of the 993 was the most powerful engined model of the series and also is worth the most. The GT2 Evo model is off the scale with regards to value. I think you're looking at one and a half to two million nowadays. Now for all you people who know your Porsches, you'll have noticed that in the B-roll, my son would have put in the engine lid rising and you will have noticed that it rises actually quite abruptly when actually on a standard 993, the rear engine lid should just unlock and then you should lift it up manually. The reason being is because um, the struts went on this a couple of years back and with all the relative work that was performed on the car, I put new struts on, I always put new struts on the on the bonnet as well, but put new struts on the engine lid and the new struts that raise the, the rear engine lid cover are underneath, you can't actually see them. And I put the um, higher performance rear struts on there, they're actually designed for a turbo rear wing, so they're actually quite aggressive, so that's why the engine lid springs up in the manner it does. <laughs> Just the pulley that's slightly dry because the car doesn't get driven that much. So as 
soon as I drive it for a few miles then that tool warms up and, and the squeaking goes. You'll notice from the sound of the car that it sounds quite substantially different to any other normal car because it's air cooled. You get that raspy sound from the 993 and this comes from the characteristic of the engine not having a water jacket. So you don't have that water jacket which dampens the sound of all the engineering, the crankshaft, the con rods and the pistons moving around. So you get more of an engineering sound from the engine which is which is a bespoke sound and something that is really loved about the old style 993s. Okay, thank you for watching guys. So that was the eighth in the series and we documented my ownership of my 993S. Please subscribe and please like if you like it. And if you don't like the video, then feel free to double tap that dislike button. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.